Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the Gigabyte 990 FXA UD7 version 1.1. Now the reason we're looking at revision 1.1 of this particular motherboard, the motherboard itself has been out for a while, uh, but version 1.1 will guarantee that you get the motherboard that ships with the F10 version of the BIOS installed, and that will make sure that you will be compatible with the latest iteration of AMD's FX series of processors. So this one, for example, is an 8350. Do note the 3 rather than the 1 in the second digit there, 8350. Here is a pile driver based uh, microarchitecture CPU, and the code name for the uh, second gen FX processors like this one is Vishera. Uh, pile driver being the microarchitecture code name. The first gen processors, the microarchitecture was called Bulldozer. That series of CPUs is called Zambezi. And uh, just to make sure if you're going to buy one of the new processors, you want a motherboard that's compatible, you're going to get revision 1.1 and that'll make sure that you're going to get set up and good to go. And the BIOS version here again was F10. Um, so you can update, for example, a 1.0 version to F10 and then you get the same functionality that you see here. But this motherboard, just to go over the features of it, of course, it's an AM3 Plus socket uh, CPU motherboard, so that means it's compatible, of course, with the F FX series of processors. It's also backwards compatible with the Athlon 2 and Phenom, Phenom 2 processors from the AM3 line, so you can pop one of those in, although this is best suited, of course, for the FX series. And then, of course, here indicating that that new BIOS is installed and updated. Uh, also, some information here, we have Crossfire X as well as SLI support, and you can do 4-way Crossfire X as well as 4-way SLI. You also, also have Gigabyte's 333 onboard acceleration. You get the 8 plus 2 power, power phase delivery, so 8-phase uh, power for the CPU, 2-phase for the North Bridge and the Hyper Transport. Uh, you also get the Ultra Durable 3 uh, construction here from Gigabyte, so they use twice the copper in the PCB. They use high quality Japanese capacitors and uh, as well as MOSFETs and ferric core chokes. And then of course uh, FX processor compatible, you get the 9 series chipset so that includes the 990FX Northbridge as well as the 950SB Southbridge. And then some more information about the uh, hardware that's used in there, you get the USB 3.0 of course, SATA revision 3, uh, 108 decibel signal to noise ratio, Blu-ray lossless audio. There is some more information here on the back, and I'm not going to go over all this. Some of it is repeated, but you guys can take a closer look there. Let's go ahead and look at the accessories. Let's take a look inside the box. We have another box. Wait, it's stuck. Okay, there's the motherboard. It's got a nice little peekaboo window for you. And we're going to start off with accessories before we move on to the motherboard. Let me just prop this up. And here we start with the installation user's manual. Uh, always nice to keep this on hand while you're doing your build. You also get a driver disk, and uh, it's generally much better to go to the Gigabyte website to download the latest drivers for this motherboard because there are most likely updated ones as compared to what's on the disk. Uh, here's the manual. It's sort of uh, going to take you through all the different components on the board and the uh, basic steps for installation. You can check out our how to build a computer video if you want to see a full guide on how to build a computer, of course. Uh, gigabyte case badge if you're into case badges. Multilingual installation guidebook if English is not your first language. And then we have accessories. Oh, here's another case badge. Dolby Home Theater. All right, here is a Crossfire bridge. They've actually included a ton of bridges in with this motherboard, which is very nice because having the capability to support stuff like three-way, four-way Crossfire X and SLI is nice, but if you don't have the uh, bridges to actually plug that in and do it, then it makes it a bit more difficult. So, all right, let me sort these out. Here's SLI, here's Crossfire. So you get two Crossfire bridges, which is something that you don't often see included with motherboards. You get a four-way rigid PCB SLI bridge for four-way SLI. You get a three-way rigid PCB SLI bridge here, also for three-way SLI, and then a two-way flexible SLI bridge here for two-way SLI. You have a uh, motherboard input output shield right there with the color coding to tell you what ports are what. And then you get some serial ATA cables. It looks like here we have a total of four. Uh, they're all black. They're all SATA revision 3 compatible and two of them have L brackets on one of the ends. 
And now on to the 990FX AUD7 motherboard itself. As you can see here on the front, it is primarily black in color. You have some very nice looking gray heat sinks here with a little bit of orange or copper, I would say more like copper uh, accents on them. Very, very nice looking. And then here on the back, just to give you guys a closer look at the PCB, it is black. It's flat black and it's actually black. It's a, it's a very nice color. I would say it would blend in with most systems and look quite nice. And then also for the uh, heat sinks that are on the board, they are attached with Phillips head spring-loaded screws, so you can remove those without too much difficulty if it ever becomes necessary. Back here on the front of the board, you're just, just going to point out the uh, fan headers. We have a total of four. You get one for the CPU fan right up here at the top. That's a four-pin header. You get a power fan header right there. That's a three-pin. One more three-pin system fan header down here on the bottom left, and then one four-pin PWM system fan header down there in the bottom right. Speaking of the bottom right, that's where we're going to go right now. And we're going to start off with the, well, not start, but we're going to continue with a detailed look at all of the components on the motherboard. So right above that system fan header, we have a debug LED. And I love debug LEDs because if you ever have issues when you're getting your system up and running, you can reference the code on the debug LED that will help you determine what the issue might be. And uh, it's very, just, just very, very helpful if you ever have any uh, weird issues or stick of RAM is bad, something like that really helps you find that out. Right here at the bottom we have the front panel connectors, those are color coded in there and there's a little chart even right below it that will tell you uh, what to plug in where. You also have a trusted platform module header right there and uh, if you're into that sort of thing you can plug that in. You also have a USB 3.0 connector right there, so 20 pin for front panel USB 3 connectivity. And then to the left of that we have some USB 2.0 headers. You know the red one right here is uh, provides increased voltage and is also always on even when the system is off. So if you run that to your front panel connector for USB 2.0 for example, it's a great uh, method to allow you to charge stuff um, off of that. Uh, additional voltage header. A couple more USB 2.0 headers right there for additional USB 2 connectors. The system fan header that I already pointed out to you guys. You have a firewire connector right there. Then you have an audio header as well as an SPDIF output and that's where you will connect your front panel audio. Speaking of the audio on this board, it is controlled and powered by a Realtek ALC 889 codec 7.1 channel Dolby Home Theater audio chip. Uh, and then we have PCI Express, and this is uh, one of the areas where this board really shines because, again, it is set up for uh, single, two-way, three-way, or four-way four -way Crossfire X or SLI configurations. Uh, you will we'll note that you will want two space cards in order to do that, and you will have a little bit of overhang down here at the bottom if you are going to go for a crazy quad SLI configuration. Uh, these uh, PCI Express slots do share bandwidth, uh, but in the maximum configuration with four cards, they're going to go X8, 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 and X8. Uh, if you're going to go a two-way, for example, I'd recommend using this one here and this one here. Those are both wired up for 16X. Those will default to 16X if you connect to both of those. Of course, you have all of those available for additional add-on cards if you're not going to use it to uh, max out your video cards. Do bear in mind, if you're going to go with quad, uh, you are going to have a little bit of overhang down here at the bottom, and you might be blocking off some of these lower connection points. Also, you have one legacy PCI slot there as well, so just to point that out. And then moving on to the right, we have our 950 SB Southbridge heatsink. And again here, just a closer look at that gray and copper heatsink design. And you also have a heat pipe running between this and the heat sink up here for the uh, 990FX Northbridge as well as the MOSFET heat sinks. Uh, I'm going to flip the board on its side because uh, you do have six serial ATA revision 3 ports over here, these black ones that are controlled by that 950 SB Southbridge. Uh, so they're all SATA Rev 3, so that's a, a 6 gigabit per second connectivity. And you have some RAID configuration options there. You can do zero. Uh, I believe 0, 1, 5, 10, and JBOD configurations with that connection. Then you also have a couple additional Serial ATA Revision 3 ports right here. And these are controlled by an add-on controller. That's a Marvell 88SE9172. That's also capable of RAID 0 and RAID 1. But uh, you, you can't combine that with the, with the black ports. Just, just bear that in mind. So you could do RAID 0 or RAID 1 2-drive configuration off of that port. Right above that, you'll notice you have an ATX 4-pin connector. That's actually a... Uh, Serial ATA power connector. Now this is an optional plug. It provides extra power to the board. Uh, in most configurations with a single or two card configuration, you will not need to plug that in. But I would recommend if you're going with uh, two-way uh, SLI or Crossfire X or more, uh, plug that in to make sure you get extra juice to the board, especially when you're powering up the system. Uh, having multiple cards in there is a pretty big draw and uh, extra juice definitely helps get you up and running and stable. 
Above that, you have some surface mounted connect, uh, power and reset buttons, so power reset, and then you also have a clear CMOS right there. And they've even, they've even put a little bit of a little protective cap over that to keep you from accidentally pushing that and clearing your CMOS when you didn't intend to, which can be kind of a pain. Above that, you have a 24 pin main motherboard power connector. That's where you plug that in from your power supply. Uh, above that's the power fan header that I mentioned before, and then uh, we have our DDR3 RAM slots right there. So this is a dual channel DDR3. You are going to want to uh, plug your DDR3 RAM in sets of two, and uh, you can reference the manual to make sure you're plugging into the right slots. Uh, it's 1.5 volt DDR3 DIMMs recommended, supports 8 gig DIMMs, so you can do up to 32 gigs total uh, connected and plugged in right there. And then next to that, you have your AM3 Plus socket. The black socket is uh, what's used universally for AM3 Plus. Uh, the actual little pinholes on that are a little bit wider than with AM3. It's one of the differences. But you have your standard uh, AM... Actually, they've been using this standard mounting solution here for uh, heat sinks since AM2. So very uh, forwards and backwards compatible with lots of different heat sink configurations, heat sink fans for your CPU. So you can mount that on right there. And of course, uh, with the revision 1.1 and the F10 BIOS installed here, you have support for the second gen Vishera processors. Uh, the other thing that the BIOS update gave you is actually some uh, load line control function in there as well. So you can use that to uh, give you a bit better and more stable overclock on your CPU. Speaking of overclocking, you have your power delivery area right here. Here you can see all the power phases. Again, 8 plus 2 power phase delivery. Uh, and then again, some big beefy heat sinks right on top of the uh, MOSFETs for the power phase delivery, as well as the 990FX chipset, which is right underneath that one there. You got the ultra durable logo and the copper highlighting. And then flipping over here, you can see tucked away the 8 pin supplemental CPU power connector. So definitely want to plug that in to make sure that your CPU is getting all the juice that it needs. And then we will close with our inputs and outputs here on the uh, back panel. So for rear panel I.O. you have a combo PS2 port right there for mouse or keyboard. A couple uh, USB 2.0 ports and I like that we have some standard USB 2 back here because those provide a bit better compatibility with your operating system when you're first installing everything. So uh, for mouse and keyboard connections plug those in right there. You have some optical, uh, I'm sorry, optical Toslink audio out right there as well as a coax audio connector. Uh, you have Firewire you have uh, this red ports here, uh, the one there and the two there. Those are the sort of supplemental power uh, USB ports that you can use for charging. You have a combo USB SATA connector right there for eSATA. You have another eSATA port right there. That's just the standard eSATA. You have a couple USB 3.0 ports, a couple more USB 2.0 ports. You have an RJ45 connector right there for gigabit Ethernet, and that is controlled by a Realtek RTL 8111E chip. And then finally, you have your analog connectors over here for your Realtek 7.1 channel audio. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte 990 FXA UD7 motherboard featuring the AM3 Plus socket, 990 FX Northbridge, 950 SB Southbridge, and of course, support for AMD's new Vishera 2nd Gen FX processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.